Before this video starts, I just want to thank you guys for making my 2021 such an incredible year. I went from 34 subs in September to over 4,000 subs just four months later. I'm still shocked how quickly this channel has grown. And of course, there's plenty more content to come for the new year. Now, without further ado, let's move on to the video. You're probably wondering, what's the difference between this video and the one I made before about inbred people in history? In the previous video, I covered the top 10 most inbred people of all time, covering both royalty and the everyday man. Well, blue man in that case. In this video, however, we'll be covering the top 10 most inbred royals in modern day history. Although inbreeding is not a common thing these days, royalty continues to have a bad reputation when it comes to inbreeding. And in this video, I'll be proving to you why this is indeed a legitimate perception. For example, the most well-known case of royal inbreeding would be the fact that Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were second cousins. However, they're actually related through another branch of the family, meaning that they are doubly inbred, and this is a fact that the royal family don't want you to know about. However, there are many, many more cases of inbreeding within modern royal families, which is withheld from the public. In this video, I will be exposing the inbreeding secrets of many royal families around the world. And if anyone who represents or is from any of the families I'm covering in today's video, please don't assassinate me. I'm too young to die. <laughs> Without further ado, let's move on to the top 10 most inbred modern day royals. Number 10, the royal family of the United Arab Emirates. So here is the first family that I am scared about exposing, but I'm going to do it anyway. The current monarch of the UAE, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, is rather notorious these days. He's one of the richest monarchs in the world and commands a brood of children. However, there are issues when we dive into his second marriage with his first cousin, Hind. Together, Mohammed and Hind have 12 children, including the heir apparent to the UAE. Despite the close relationship between Mohammed and Hind, it is not clear as to whether any of their 12 children suffer from any genetic abnormalities because of the close relationship of their parents. Other than their eldest son, who passed away from cardiac arrest in his 30s, it is unclear as to whether inbreeding was responsible. Number nine, the Queen's children. The British royal family is known for many things. Diana, this legend, and this not so legend. But two things the royal family is renowned for especially, inbreeding and deceiving the public. Now, Buckingham Palace was pretty honest about how Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were related. Both of them are descendants from Queen Victoria, through Victoria's eldest son, Edward, and her second eldest daughter, Alice, which would make the Queen and Philip third cousins. Unfortunately for the royal family, we can access the entire royal family tree and this exposes a lot of crap. Firstly, Queen Victoria's son, Edward, was married to a Danish princess, whose brother was the King of Greece. Now, the Queen is a descendant of the one Danish princess, while her husband, Philip, is the great-grandson of that King of Greece. Because of this, the Queen and her husband are also second cousins, which means that they are doubly related. Yikes. <laughs> This means that Prince Charles' siblings, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward and Princess Anne are also his second cousins at the same time. Number eight, Charles and Camilla. As just mentioned, Prince Charles is indeed inbred as his parents are second cousins and third cousins simultaneously. On first glance, Charles and Camilla are not related, but in reality, they are and this is a secret that the royal family is not too pleased about me exposing, probably. So how are these two actually related? Charles' great-grandfather was Edward VII, who was a notorious womanizer and had a brood of mistresses. One of his mistresses, Alice Keppel, was indeed a beauty. By 1898, however, she was no longer sexually active with her husband, and instead, she was sexually active with Edward VII. In 1900, she gave birth to a daughter named Sonia. So what can we take from this? Well, it's pretty obvious that Sonia was not conceived by Alice's Keppel's husband since the two were no longer sexually active. What does this mean exactly? Well, Sonia is the grandmother of Camilla, 
And as we know, Edward VII is the great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather of Prince Charles, meaning that the two are indeed related. <laughs> Number seven, the King and Queen of Greece. Back in the 1960s, Bruh. the former King and Queen of Greece were one of the most iconic couples. The King, Constantine, was an Olympic gold medalist and his bride, Anne-Marie of Denmark, was one of the most beautiful royals of the 20th century. However, one disturbing fact is that they are cousins twice over, just like the Queen and Prince of England. On the one side of the family, the King and Queen are both descendants of Queen Victoria, who at this point is a lot of great-grandmother to almost every royal dynasty in Europe today. At the same time, the King and Queen of Greece are both descendants of King Christian IX of Denmark. What makes things worse, however, is that unlike the Queen and Prince of England, the King and Queen of Greece are actually triply related. When we investigate the King's ancestry, we can detect many disturbing issues. Firstly, one of the King's great-grandparents was a sibling of another of his great-grandparents. Perhaps even more disturbing is the fact that the King's great-grandparents are also his great-great-grandparents because both of the King's grandmothers were cousins. Ew, I'm confusing. Number six, the King of Thailand. If I was making this video in Thailand, exposing the King's inbreeding, this would land me in jail. However, thankfully I'm recording this in England, so I'm safe, for now at least. <laughs> the King of Thailand has a rather notorious personal life. He has been married five or six times, hard to say really. His latest and fifth wife in 2019 was stripped of her title as royal consort through reportedly insulting the king and his mother, only for the palace to restore her title three months later. But let's move on to the genealogy of the king. The king of Thailand has the usually expected number of great grandparents, although one of them appears more than once on his side of the family. His great grandfather is also his great great grandfather on his mother's side. Number five, Alexei, the Tsarevich of Russia. Alexei, the last heir to the Russian throne, is well known in history, with many lists out there blaming him for the collapse of the Russian Empire in 1917. In reality, the collapse of the Russian Empire is much more nuanced than this, but the illness and the inbreeding of Alexei, the final heir, does bear responsibility. Alexei inherited a deadly disease, haemophilia which prevents the blood from clotting because of his mother, who in turn inherited it from her ancestor, Queen Victoria. Although all of Alexei's siblings died in 1918 from assassination, scientists have proven that all of his sisters too carried the disease, meaning that they would have likely passed it on to their children if they had any. Number four, Alfonso, the Prince of Spain. Unlike Alexei, Alfonso is not known to many in history, even though he had haemophilia. Alfonso was the heir to the Spanish throne in the 1920s, during an incredibly unstable time in Spanish politics. Like Edward VIII of England, Alfonso repudiated his rights to the Spanish throne to marry a commoner. Unfortunately, in 1938, he died from a car accident. He would have survived, but his haemophilia prevented his blood from clotting and he bled to death. Ultimately, Alfonso looked out because of the inbreeding of his ancestors. Remember, these people. Number three, Empress Elizabeth of Austria. Empress Elizabeth of Austria, also known as Elizabeth von Bayern, was the penultimate Empress of Austria and one of the most beautiful modern royals of the time. Though if I'm being honest, these guys are definitely more attractive. Anyway, Elizabeth's life was a constant tragedy. She soon fell ill at ease at the Austrian court because her upbringing had been so relaxed. Her only son committed suicide in the 1880s and Elizabeth blamed herself for his death, resulting in a Herculean torture for her in the final years of her life. Her anorexia is well documented and she was waifish well into an advanced age. Historians are in agreement that Elizabeth likely suffered from chronic depression. Interestingly, I would argue that her chronic depression was probably a byproduct of her inbreeding. Unfortunately, the Austrian royals did not realise how much inbreeding was influential in psychological torment. Elizabeth's son, who committed suicide, certainly had depression, and his parents were first cousins. Number two, Ludwig, the Mad King of Bavaria. Ludwig, who has an extant reputation for being insane, commissioned the beautiful Neuschwanstein Castle in the 1800s. 
Alike his cousin, Ludwig suffered from intense feelings of depression and his consanguinity is likely a leading cause for this psychological torment. Unfortunately, he was outed from the throne with his counsellors claiming that he was insane. In reality, Ludwig was depressed because he felt immensely guilty for being a homosexual. Before I present my number one choice, here are some honourable mentions. The Duchess of Alba. The first time I saw the Duchess of Alba, I thought she was clearly an inbred royal. However, when we look at her ancestry, I soon realised that she was indeed not inbred, and probably only mildly so when we look back at her ancestors in the 19th century. But the reason why the Duchess of Alba looks like this isn't because of inbreeding, but it's because of really bad plastic surgery. Queen Victoria's children. The reason why I include Queen Victoria's children as an honourable mention is because their inbreeding is well documented. Plus, they were from the 1840s and 50s, meaning that they don't really count as a modern royal. Nonetheless, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, who were first cousins, plagued their children with inbreeding issues. Their youngest son, Leopold, died before the age of 30 from haemophilia. Victoria and Albert's relation to one another encouraged recessive genes to be passed on. Number one, Queen Liliuokalani of Hawaii. The last ruler of the Kingdom of Hawaii, Lydia Kamehameha, was baptised in the Anglican faith. Because of this, and because I'm probably butchering how I'm pronouncing her name, I'm going to refer to her as Lydia throughout the rest of this video. Lydia reigned over an extremely turbulent period in Hawaii's political biography. When she came to the throne in 1893, Hawaii's government was divided among four parties, all of whom failed to gain a political monopoly. By 1895, anti-monarchists, many of whom were supported by the USA, flooded the streets of Honolulu. To quell the unrest of her city, Lydia temporarily handed control of Hawaii to the USA, believing that the USA would restore control of Hawaii and ultimately give Lydia back her throne. Instead, the USA annexed Hawaii, some claim illegally, and forced Lydia into exile. Interestingly, Lydia has the highest consanguinity coefficient of any modern royal. Lydia's family was indeed closely related. Lydia's great-grandfather, High Chief Kepokolani, was her great-grandfather twice over because both of her grandfathers were brothers. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. My name is the Shy Historian and stay tuned for many more.